What if I told you there was a roadmap that you can follow that will keep you out of toxic relationships mentally, emotionally, and physically? This roadmap that I want to share with you has existed since the beginning of time. It's an ancient roadmap for you to follow. The problem is, is that there's another roadmap that's been given by modern society. And that roadmap keeps you oppressed. That roadmap keeps you vulnerable to narcissistic abuse. Let's talk about these roadmaps. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal We. Now, before I do continue, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. I take telephone calls and video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. Also, the Royal We private membership is available for you where you get daily access to support by me and a growing community of people all over the world. There's a workout program for you. There's weekly fellowship and so much more, all within the privacy of a members-only app. So head on down to the description box below this video and check out the Royal We private membership. Now, let's get into this topic of the ancient roadmap that will keep you out of toxic relationships. If you understand this roadmap and the principles in it, you will avoid becoming intimately enmeshed with narcissistically abusive personalities. It comes straight out of the Bible. This is not so that you can be transformed or anything like that. I'm not trying to make converts here, just trying to share with you some ancient wisdom. Let's take a look at this and we'll see the ancient roadmap to stay out of narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. Right from the very beginning, Genesis 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, God created him, male and female. He created them in the image and likeness of God. What is the image and likeness of God? The image and likeness of God is completion. God doesn't need anybody else in order to be. God is fully self-actualized. And guess what? So are you. You being made in the image and in the likeness of your creator, you don't need anybody else in order to be. You don't need anybody else to tell you who you are. You simply are because you are already made in the image and in the likeness of your creator. You are made complete. We can call this being self-aware. We can call this self-acceptance, accepting who you are as a created being. Step number one, know who you are. Step number two, know your task, what you're here to do, what you're here to accomplish. Each and every one of you, myself included, has something inside that burns with a task, a responsibility. We're supposed to dive into that. That's step number two. First is radical acceptance, self-actualization. Second, your task, your responsibility. What's your purpose here? Then, number three, last in this map, the last step, last but not least, of course, right? Verse 18, and then after all that, the Lord God said it's not good that mankind should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Number three, the final step on the map is finding a relationship. The last step, last but not least, because it's important, but the last thing is to find a relationship, an intimate partner, a husband, a wife, close friends. But you see, in God's map, it comes last. It comes after you know who you are, after you're doing your tasks and your assignment, then you find a helper because it gets into the purpose of a relationship. This is something we've never been told about relationships. We've been walking around trying to find somebody because they're beautiful or they're good looking or they're funny. But according to God's roadmap, the purpose of a relationship or marriage is to have somebody helpful in your life, somebody comparable to you. This is what being equally yoked is all about. If they're not helpful for you, then why are they in your life? But see, you can't even find somebody who's helpful for you until you first know who you are and what you're even doing. So this is why it has to be in this order. This is why God's roadmap, the ancient literature, gives us the perfect roadmap. Know who you are. Be self-actualized. From that, know your task on this world. From that, 
find relationships that help you, help you to sustain your God-given gifts and your God-given task, help you to sustain who you are in the image and likeness of your creator. That's the simple to follow three-step roadmap that will keep you out of toxicity. But as I said before, we've been given another roadmap by society. It's a narcissistic game, so to speak. And it's the reverse of God's roadmap. And it's the roadmap that you and I and our families have bought into for generations. And it keeps people oppressed. Let's take a look at that roadmap. This roadmap is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Human Necessity. Maslow's Hierarchy says that self-actualization, a sense of self, can't exist until you have all these other criteria met in your life. And so they built this pyramid. The base of this pyramid, the first thing that Maslow's hierarchy says that you need is your physiological needs. Basically, it says you need air in your lungs or else you're dead. That's dumb. I don't even know why they included that. Obviously, you need air in your lungs or you're going to die. No duh. Why even include that except to make it seem like this is a legitimate pyramid, a legitimate map. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Obviously, you need air in your lungs. Praise God, if you're watching this video, you have air in your lungs. But this is where it gets wonky. The next level up, according to Maslow's hierarchy of human necessity, is that the first thing you need is employment, property, family, and social ability. They call this safety and security. Until you have this, you can forget about being self-actualized. You can forget self-acceptance. You have to have employment, property, and family first. I mean, come on. How many of you have gone to jobs, employment, and have seen workplace violence, workplace hostility, workplace narcissistic abuse as people fight each other on the job, clamor over one another, step on one another, trying to climb the corporate ladder? This is what workplace narcissistic abuse is all about. Why? You want to know why? Because according to Maslow's hierarchy of human necessity here, Unless you have some position in your employment, some social ability here, you're a nobody. Now we know where the mindset of narcissism comes from, why people are abusive, why it creates a dog-eat-dog environment, which most jobs are, because they're fighting, because they have no sense of self, because they're told they have no sense of self unless they have this role or this job at work. And so they will push you out of your position at work out of a scarcity mindset, a narcissistic scarcity mindset, they will fight their coworkers, push people out, get people out of the way so that they can have this position of employment so that they ultimately can feel like they can find themselves. Look what also is in safety and security. Family. The same is true with family. How many toxic, dysfunctional families are out there with brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers fighting each other? over some position in the family. And so you have the golden child and you have the scapegoat. Why? Why does any of this exist? Well, because of a scarcity mindset. Because of this hierarchy that says, if you don't have a position in your family, then you're a nobody. You can see how Mazo's hierarchy has people scrambling and fighting each other narcissistically because there's no self-worth unless you are, unless you have this. So from safety and security, which means employment, property, and family, which is creates narcissistic abuse, the next thing after you have that is love and belonging. Then you can have friendship, intimacy, and a sense of connection. Only after you have fought for your place in a family or fought for your position at work, then you can have a sense of connection and intimacy. But this creates just the same problem. Now you get the same people following this backwards roadmap who now find a girlfriend, find a boyfriend, and fight people off for that. Don't be looking at my girlfriend. Don't be looking at my boyfriend. All these schoolyard brawls. What for? Really? How stupid is it? How narcissistic is it? The reason is, is because they believe, according to this roadmap, without that relationship, without that boyfriend, without that girlfriend, they're a nobody. This narcissistic roadmap has created narcissistic abuse. I need this in order to be somebody. 
I need this person in order to be somebody. I need this job to be somebody. I need this family, the status in the family to be somebody. Because then after you have that, then you can have self-esteem. Once you have chased everybody off your hot boyfriend or girlfriend, now you can have self-esteem. Now you have the right, according to Maslow's hierarchy of human necessity, to be confident, to have the respect of others. See, this is why narcissistic bullies out there fight for all this stuff. They think it's going to get them respect, according to Maslow's hierarchy here. Now they have the respect of others. Now they can be a unique individual. Then after all of this, then you can know yourself. At the very top of this pyramid, you can then have creativity, spontaneity, self-acceptance, and, and meaning in life, and inner potential. Only after you have all of these other things. You know the big problem with this is that people can spend their lives fighting and clamoring and chasing all of this stuff because they believe it's going to help them discover themselves and have self-acceptance. And guess what? It never does. I know this because I watched my dad live this lifestyle. My dad played this narcissistic game. I'm not trying to spoil the video, but check out my narcissistic father's last words before dying. I put that video. I'll post, I'll post a link right there. He chased all of this stuff. The jobs, fought for positions, chased the women and the relationships, lived this lifestyle. And you know what his last words before dying were? I'm going to spoil it right here. I never knew myself. All this stuff, Maslow's hierarchy, people can climb it, search for it. Narcissists do. This is the narcissistic person's game. They chase all of this stuff and never find themselves. So let's compare. Maslow's hierarchy is nothing but an upside down version of what God had established from the beginning. The roadmap to free your life of toxicity. God's roadmap to allow you to live a fulfilled life looks like this. It begins down at the bottom with self-actualization. You as an individual need to have self-acceptance of who you are, your likes, your dislikes, your passions in life, everything. Know who you are created in the image and likeness of God. That's where it all begins full self-acceptance. That is self-actualization. Then from that, you can go into the area of self-esteem, which comes from the tasks that you've been given, the job, the assignment, your passions, what you live up for. What is your task? That's step number two. And then after all of that is your relationships. Your relationships, your love and belonging needs to be helpmates, people comparable to you, equally yoked, that help you to stay within your self-esteem, that help you to stay within your tasks. That's what helpmates do. Your husband, your wife, your family. This is why Jesus, when he was teaching in a synagogue, and his mom and his brother ran to the outside and said, Jesus, come out here and talk to us. Jesus said, who's my mother? Who are my brothers? He pointed to his disciples. Why? Because his disciples were those friends, were the actual family that he chose who were supportive of him which comes from the sense of self, who you are, and your relationship with God. This is God's economy. This is God's roadmap for your life. And if you follow this, self first, your responsibilities in life, and then your relationships, if you follow that, you'll avoid toxicity because it all comes from yourself. You won't allow anything in your life that's damaging to yourself. But if you follow Maslow's hierarchy, which is backwards, you're going to chase for your job to tell you who you are, for your family to tell you who you are, for relationships and intimacy to tell you who you are, and you're going to be abused, and you will never reach self-actualization. If you ask me, whether you're a believer or not, I choose God's roadmap over Maslow's. In fact, I'm living out of God's roadmap for my life. I'm not clamoring over anybody for a job and fighting for position. I'm not fighting for a position in somebody's family. Most of the people who do this, they don't even know themselves. That's what narcissistic people do. They fight for position in a family because they don't know themselves. I choose to operate out of knowing who I am, contributing to the world through that, and then allowing relationships to come into my life who support all of that. 
and I support all of, all of what they are. As I said before, I am here to support you. I hope that this message has found you at this right time in your life. And if you'd like to talk about this even further, head on down there, schedule some time with me. I do take one-on-one -on -one appointments, telephone, video calls are available for you. Also, don't forget the Royal We Private Membership is available for daily support, access to me, people all over the world. Head on down to the description box and get started in the private membership where you get access to your own private app. I'll be back with more right here on the Royal We. If you're brand new to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel. That's the only way that this message is going to get shared with anybody is your subscription. Your subscription matters. So subscribe to this channel, help share this, share this video with somebody who needs to watch it. Like this video right now. Give it a thumbs up. Leave your comment with your thoughts down below. Check out one of these videos recommended by the YouTube algorithm. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here. Have a great day, everybody.